a bunch of subnets have a bunch of red flags. Hey, this is Travis. Talflute.com is now live and I want to show you how I use it to find subnet gems. So what Talflute does is it condenses a whole bunch of information into one screen so that you can get a really good feel for the market. There's obviously a lot of information here and there's a lot more that's not immediately visible here. So firstly, each row is a subnet and each column has a little bit of description about it here if you hover over the eye. And my favorite column right now is the flags column. So if you hover over one of these icons here, it'll tell you what the flag is indicating. So gray here just means that there's no problems with this particular subnet say, but let's organize it by price ascending. And we can see that this one in particular, this Cora subnet has a 100% minor burn flag. It has over 30 days with no repository activity, and it has over 30 days since the subnet owner responded in Discord. And finally, it's the fourth in line to be deregistered. So there's a lot of red flags in this particular subnet. But if you know me, the way I like to invest is I like to look at these lower price subnets and find the hidden gems. And so that's why I've built Talflute is to help me identify the ones that have a lot of red flags and the ones that don't. So this just allows me to skip through a lot of these. These ones here, they're all kind of lined up to be deregistered seven, eight, nine or less places away from being deregistered. It doesn't mean that they will for sure get deregistered, but they're kind of close. So what I kind of do is I go down here and I look for ones that have fewer red flags. So this East World one right now is the one with the least red flags. You can see this column here is how active the team is on Discord. So it's been zero days since the last team member message. You can see they've done a little bit of code updates here. But say like I wanted to do a bit more research on one of these subnets, um, then I can build my conviction potentially and start investing in it. The Talflute dashboard is really just to filter out all the issues, all the potential issues so that you can save time and look at subnets that actually have potential rather than wasting your time on subnets that might have a few red flags. The other thing to note about this dashboard is often you can just click to actually look at a source for something. So say this one here, here is the biggest code line commit in the last 14 days. So if I wanted to, I could just look at that one for Eastworld and actually go and take a look at the code that they're committing and what they're actually doing. Often, actually, what I've found is when people are talking with me about subnets, uh, it's really nice to just have Talflute up in the background. I can scroll to the subnet that they're talking about, and then maybe maybe they've got 100% minor burn, and I can just you know, start thinking about that rather than having to remember all the various things that you have to remember as an investor. This just kind of immediately highlights many of the potential issues with a subnet. And that's the plan for Talflute is to just gather a whole bunch of investor data so that you and I, we don't have to go and spend a whole bunch of time researching a bunch of subnets that, you know, have a bunch of red flags. We can instead invest our time in like maybe understanding the incentive mechanism or something that's a little bit less easy to identify programmatically. And then if I want to check, like say Happy AI here and just check on the number of miners that are running on the subnet, I can actually just click on the link and that brings me to the Tau Stats Metagraph here. And then I could actually just double check here from a reputable source like Tau Stats, the total number of miners on the subnet. Notably, the number of miners here I have is the number of cold keys because many miners will register one or more UIDs, uh, whereas I think cold keys is maybe just a tad better at determining the proper total number of miners. So I want to give you like an example of how I go through this because there's always going to be red flags for various things. And it's just important to be aware of them and not just make investment decisions based on them, but just be aware, oh, this subnet has 100% minor burn, but I trust the owner and they're saying next week they're going to reduce that. So I, I will very often look at a subnet that has a red flag here or there and then just see if I can justify to myself why it isn't as big a deal as it might be for other subnets. So when I'm thinking about trading and investing, I'm thinking in like maybe a couple weeks or a month time frame for holding the investment, maybe a couple months. Uh, I try not to have any really long term holds because I think it's a little bit risky to do that with alpha. Although right now the sum of subnets is really low. So having longer term holds, as long as you've got really strong conviction about the team behind the subnet, I think that's probably okay at this point.
once the sum of subnets starts going up again, I'd start getting a little bit worried. And then your conviction has to be even higher than it needs to be for investing, like say right now. Interesting one here with seemingly no red flags is this 111 subnet. They made a huge commit recently. Um, so let's take a look at that. Looks like a lot of JavaScript code. I guess it looks like mostly a refactor based on the naming changes. But I hadn't really paid attention to 111 until it got really low price here. So again, that's what I like to invest in is the super low price ones. And so 111, if I had conviction about it and I had done a little bit more research, it might be in a good place to buy right now, just based off of the kind of slow descent here. You know, it's not at risk of being deregistered soon. They are actually building something, although their team doesn't seem to be quite as active as I would like. Looks like they do actually have a whole bunch of miners mining. It's got a somewhat high burn, but that doesn't matter too much as long as it's not 100%. So based on what I'm seeing right now on the Tau Flute, I would take a look at 111 and just do some deeper digging. And then you can do some other things with Tau Flute as well. You can actually organize it by lines per day. And if we've got it pointing up here, it's actually looking at the teams that have committed most recently. So all of these guys here, uh, even though there's no line here, it's a relative line to the other line, so it's just not visible. If I click on ridges here, you'll see they committed something 40 minutes ago. Um, so this just kind of gives us an idea of like the really active teams. So Basilica here, seven hours ago. So one thing that I like to do is look at the lines per day graph here and then take a look and see if I can find any prices that are rather low. So maybe like this Flamewire one, maybe Bitcoop maybe mainframe and just take a look and see if they were really active and they have really low prices. I'd get interested and start taking a, a deeper look at them. You can also see that all of these ones have really good team activity as well. Like the zero here, maybe I need to change how this looks, but zero here just means that it's been zero days since the last Discord message from a team member. So yeah, what is going on with Bitcoop here? Because they apparently committed something, but they haven't messaged much. So this was eight hours ago. They did a refactor. Here's another interesting one, 114 here. So they have been making a few changes. There's very little team activity recently. I guess there's a cold key swap happening there. So yeah, I'd have to do more research to understand what's happening with the subnet. Another way that I could use Talfloat here is just by team activity. So all of these teams here have an active team, uh, at least as far as like posting today, for instance. So Candles here uh, stands out to me because of the low price. They haven't done anything on their repo in over 30 days, though. So that would be just another one that I would take a look at and just, you know, dig in a little bit deeper. Do I have conviction in the subnet owner? Is there any way that I can justify investing in this subnet? Because I want to look for subnet deals. I don't want to necessarily just jump on whatever the latest hype is. Although hype is a great way to invest as long as you're early enough. And the last thing I'll mention here is the liquidation price and the liquidation haircut columns. So if we organize it by liquidation price ascending, so this is the very lowest one here. What this means here is that this is the price that if the subnet was deregistered today, that is the price at which all of the alpha in the subnet will be sold for tau. So the current price of 0 0.00098 is not what people would get. They would actually get 0 0.0003 tau for each of their alpha. And then I've just got a percentage here of what that actually means. So if you're holding any rich kids of tau alpha and it gets deregistered today, then you're going to lose 67%. So that would be no fun at all. You'll notice that some of them are actually positive and that's true. Like that's how it works. So if the liquidation price is higher than the current price, when that subnet gets deregistered, all the holders are going to get a little bit more tau than they would have expected. And then if you're curious, uh, we could actually look at which subnets are going to be deregistered next. And as you can see here, we've got 101, 115, 100, and then 71. The reason that these ones in particular are getting deregistered first is because they've had four months of time to develop something and they haven't released anything. And so because of that, and they haven't turned on their emissions or anything, um, they're going to get deregistered first. 
Now, of course, this can change. Um, things will fluctuate. Actually, there's some subnets that are going to hit that four month threshold soon. So this current ordering is going to change over time. So yeah, I'm looking at tile fluid almost every day. I'm looking based on price ascending a lot of the time. I'm also looking at the lines per day ascending here and then looking for low price ones among those. I'm looking for the ones with a lot of team activity here. Probably add a graph here, uh, similar to this lines per day graph showing team activity on the Discord. And then, of course, Talflute is going to be constantly updated. I'm going to add more and more to it just to give everybody a really good feel for the market. Now, what you're seeing here, this dashboard is not going to be fully public yet. There are parts of it that are live right now. If you want to get access to the whole thing, you can go to TauTemplar.com and sign up for the BidTensor Alpha Group, where I give full access to this dashboard. But over time, there will be more and more that will be public for everybody. But if you want the latest data, go and join the BitTensor Alpha group where I'm talking about what I'm investing in, where we're discussing strategies and a little bit higher level thinking than just following the latest hype on Twitter or whatever. Also, I have an open source bot. Basically, the bot allows you to access and invest in the lower liquidity subnets. It doesn't do it by adding liquidity or anything, but you can just tell it which subnets you want to invest in and at what price points, and it'll slowly do that over time, DCAing you in uh, so you don't get the slippage that you would if you spent 10 tau to invest into some subnet that was just released today. So I do all my alpha investing through that bot now. It's essentially a dollar cost averaging bot, but with some helpful tweaks. So that bot is open source. You can go visit my GitHub. The link is in the description. Uh, I would highly suggest not using that bot right away, you know, unless you're like a developer who really understands what's going on there. If you want help with that, you can join the BitTensor Alpha group where I can help you get set up with the bot.